Hello, my name is Caleb Ledesky from York River Academy, class of 2016, and this video is in memory of Sergeant Melvin Douglas Rash. Melvin Douglas Rash was born June 8, 1946 in Plymouth Naval Weapons Station, Virginia to Howard Clifford Rash and Myrtle Louise Rash. He had an older brother, Larry, as well as a younger sister, Renee. The family moved to a small farm in Eldora, Iowa, and later moved to Yorktown, and Melvin graduated from York High in 1966. Well, we're just typical boys. We lived on a farm in Iowa, and well, wasn't much to get into because we was way out. I think our neighbor's the nearest neighbor was about half a mile away. And so that's where we learned to ride a bicycle and just get into whatever trouble we could on a farm. Well, he went right straight from the end of the Air Force, right out of the uh, high school. And so he, so he wasn't like drafted? Or? No, he would have been drafted because he was, that was during the Vietnam era. Mm -hmm. And so he, uh, rather than get drafted into the Army, he joined the Air Force. Melvin was the top of his class and was later placed in the 41st Tactical Airlift Squadron on the Blind Batch mission that was stationed in Ubon, Thailand. We knew the bases he was on, and I can't recollect all those, but all I know is that he was a loadmaster on the C-130, and so he was responsible then for prepping the loads for drops. On the night of May 22, 1968, Melvin's plane, the Blind Bats 1, was shot down during one of these missions near the border of Laos. No one survived the crash. Melvin was considered MIA until 1978 when his status was changed to presume killed. All I know is that the, on the last mission, they had a uh, night mission dropping flares over Laos or over the enemy zone. Okay. And it was on their way home and they had just, well, they weren't too far out from their home base when they lost contact with the plane. And I think one of the group flew, uh, circled back around where they lost contact with it. And they saw some fire on the ground, but that, that's the only thing we had to go on until 40 years later. After years of research, the crash site was located in 2002. With the use of DNA, the remains of Sergeant Rash were positively identified in 2009. Sergeant Rash was then buried at Arlington National Cemetery on December 7, 2009. They, they found the plane, they, or the, this crash site, in uh, 2008, and they investigated that for about a year, of which this inch plus document identifies. And well, then there was the pilot and my brother were the two that they had, had a positive ID of because they sent me a packet, I guess it was 2008 after they found the crash site. And I sent them a, a blood sample for, uh, to allow them to make a positive ID of his remains. But they carried him as missing in action for about 10 years. And then after, so from 68 to 78, he was just carried as missing in action, which means he continued to be paid and continued to be promoted. But then in uh, uh, 10 years later, after 68 and 78 then, they made a declaration of death. And so, the unfortunate thing is that mom and met dad both passed away before we brought them home. Right. And so I was the eldest. And so I, uh, you know, I basically brought them home and got them buried in Arlington. But mom and dad both had already passed away by the time we found, what, found out what positively happened to them. Every time I see a C-130 fly over, I, of course, stop and watch it fly. And one of the guys in the club has got a model of the C-130 flying, and so I enjoy watching him fly that airplane. And it's all sort of reminiscent of him. Of, of, reminds me of my brother. I've got a, uh, picked up a CD of the old album that he and I used to listen to all the time. And once in a while I'll put that on when I'm cruising around and, you know, it's just like him being in the seat next to me. Mm -hmm. 